Hey everyone, Shark here. So today we got a 1v1 for you on Famineville Approach between a couple of top players who are clearly testing out the new infantry gameplay in the Onyx Shark update. Playing as the Axis, we have Alpenwell from Germany. He's a number 74 ranked Wehrmacht player and he's using the Luftwaffe battle group. And then playing as allies, we have Janko from Poland, ranked number 141 with the Americans in 1v1, but ranked a lot higher in 2v2. He uses the advanced infantry battle group. Casting this one with me is Orange Pest, a longtime Cone of Heroes veteran and top player who really needs no introduction. On top of this stellar play here, I got to pick Orange Pest's brain on the new patch and some of the mechanics. This is a great opportunity to learn from the best in the game. Uh, I enjoy the game, I hope you do too, and with that, on to the match. Alright, so starting on the east side of the map, at the kind of the top left of the screen, we got Janko playing as the Americans, uh, building a barracks right away, getting his engineer out. And then on the opposite side of the map here, we got Alpenwell playing as Wehrmacht, getting, uh, going Luftwaffe, uh, and getting a second squad of regular Pioneers as well. So interesting approach. He's going to drop in on the fuel. Like I mentioned in the intro, casting this one with me uh, is Orange Pest, who's seen these guys play a little bit. So maybe the first thing you can tell me, do you know, is it pronounced Janko or Yanko or... I know he's I Polish. I think he is Polish. I think it's Janko. I've I've only really seen him in two v two, not so much one v one. So I'm kind of curious to see how he plays. Yeah, I think I, I I've seen him in two v twos as well. He's obviously pretty talented, and I imagine some of that'll carry over to ones. Um, Alpenwell yeah, well, plays a uh, lot. Two v two is a mode that really emphasizes like uh, active control and just playing it slower. And uh, in in Code two. Before it's over, who was the, the best player back then, started doing one months, he did a lot of 2v2s. And that kind of transferred over into really good, just holding the line a very slow play. So I'm kind of curious to see like how Janko is going to play this. Yeah. And I, I, so the other thing we were talking about as people were loading in is with the new patch, um, you see a lot of at the high level okay, US versus Wehrmacht. Because uh, Dak and Brits are both kind of struggling in the current meta. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so the big thing for Dak right now is the fact that the US economy is not only more efficient, but it's also the units on, on par with the Dak ones. They're just kind of straight up better. So, for example, the Chaffee kind of just beats everything it goes up against, right? Mm -hmm. And the Greyhound also kind of just, it's a good generalist unit, and Dak doesn't have a generalist unit. So what ends up kind of happening is you just kind of get slowly overrun as like the rifles beat your PGs because you need to play combined arms and the chef is kind of just steam all the rest of your stuff so you're always like a step behind Yeah And Brits, uh, the big problem versus oh, the MG is getting destroyed But for Brits, uh, the big thing is the sniper The sniper kind of just shuts you out and you don't really have a good answer for the sniper So in the current meta where it's very high TTK or slow TTK fast DTK rather, mm -hmm. where you're kind of playing a lot of behind cover, playing long ranges. The sections, which are really good at fighting long range, kind of get sewn out by Grants who are fighting on par, and then the sniper just kind of tips the edge to them very, very easily. Yeah, that's, I mean, hit the nail on the head. I think, you know, Dak P Grants, they scale well, but at 300 manpower per squad, right? But if you get three of them at the same manpower cost, the Americans got four rifle squads. And in a 1v1, you really feel that lack of map presence. I mean, there, there's that, and then the medic tent the literally just replenishes your model for free. So even if you do sometimes trade evenly, the US player just gets his models back for basically free. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, that's a big, like, that helps a lot. Especially in a longer game, like every model drops, you know, you, you get some stuff back and it's just constant. Yeah, it's almost like coastals, but for all infantry. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's some drawbacks when you have to build the meta tent, but like, it's... it's... There, I've talked to Marcus about it, the, the, one of the developers, and he kind of agrees it's a bit of a problem right now, so I'm hoping maybe it gets addressed in the future. Mm -hmm. Oh, rifle grenade, good dodge here. I think, really interesting, Janko's done a great job putting on a lot of pressure. I really expected the Falshim Pioneers after the patch to, to really scale better, but he's only got the one squad of them. Um, and the rifle's holding up in cover here. But yeah, Janko has been, he's essentially pushing Alpenwell back into his base. Alpenwell doing a really good job of trying to cap up the right hand side, but he's got a fight just to leave right now. Yeah, that's the big problem with the Falshim Pioneers. Well, they have okay DPS, 
their kind of trading power against rifles is very poor. On top of that, they're also more expensive than grenadiers. It's kind of kind of rough for this price point. You're getting a, a fragile four-man squad, whereas grenades, you know, they hold the line. They have self-healing. You can get early veterans. So you have a lot more options. So you can get B40s, for example. But love piles. I mean, you get mines and you get a free sweeper, which is nice. But as a combat unit, it really lacks the ability to kind of just dictate fights. Hmm. Yeah, I know. In certain game modes, they can feel oppressive early because they do, at least they did, a lot of damage. Uh, and you can get them so far forward and use the fighting position. But uh, yeah, I think in 1v1s, you just don't have the, the same manpower and you have to manage such a wide, uh, you know, portion of the map constantly that they're maybe a little bit less viable. Yeah, I mean, getting to drop early in team games is really nice. You can just take key garrisons and hold ground. But in 1v1s, especially on a map like Flamenville, Holding, like, these these buildings are designed to be weak. Like, these garrisons are basically MG garrisons, mm -hmm. and that's kind of on purpose. So dropping and claiming one of those, not only does it reduce your capping power pretty severely, you will probably also just lose the first fighting against the rifles anyway. Yeah. Good flank here by Janko. I think he spotted the MG with the, the scout flare. And so he forces away the MG-42. Alpenwell had gotten a second MG42 out to try to help him like zone out part of the map here. And now he's got Jaegers on the field. Uh, but it really feels like he's on the back foot and Janko with a nice strong push to the center of the map here. So now Alpenwell's got to slide back over. Uh, Jaegers. I imagine he's he's expecting, you know, the light vehicle play from the Americans. It's so strong right now. The Jaegers are probably going to upgrade a Panzer Shrek. Um, but their scope rifle's got a huge buff in the latest patch. Yeah, I've had a couple of games with the Jaegers when they're upgraded. It's especially once you reach veterancy too. Mm -hmm. And you can hide behind green cover, they can really get some good trading. But I think we're gonna see in about a minute the Greyhound come out. And that's gonna be really rough. He's gonna have to make a decision between the Panzer Strike or the LG-40. I personally like the LG-40, but it is, it's not a pack. Mm -hmm. Which is, but, you know, the pack is has camo, you know, it hits a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. But the only 40 has the, a little bit more utility. You can activate HE and I think it can also clock, but also it has decent fire rate. But it's just late game, it just doesn't scale that well, comparatively. Yeah, the nice thing about it, though, is that you, know, you can play with the Luftwaffe company. You're not completely relying on martyrs. Um, to your point about the chappies earlier, I feel like the martyrs are good, but they feel very clunky and difficult to use. Whereas the Chaffee with the turret and the speed is just really easy to maneuver around. Yes, there's definitely at the higher levels that doesn't matter as much, but I can definitely see in the lower levels where, you know, you have to put in a lot of effort into microing the martyrs. That can be a problem. But the martyr does have a significant advantage over the Chaffee in that it has really good range. So the, the starting ability gets the, I think it's called firing positions or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm gives it incredibly strong range and once you have the shrek out you can kind of zone out like chaffy some diving you whereas you know dak oh, no. their martyr it doesn't have that right. which is a big problem because once seeking the destroy gets activated they kind of just jump on top of you victory point is yeah. under enemy control and now the upside janko went for the infantry support center so we're not going to see the canister rounds on the greyhound which Oh, nice flank on the grenade here. It just chunks down a bunch of damage. This is a pretty late Greyhound. Usually it's seven minutes, but he did go for a pretty heavy tier one build. Mm -hmm. Three rifles plus engineers. It's, I think that's just about the threshold to get uh, the late Greyhound. Usually it's three rifles for the fastest and most often. No. no, there's not much counters on the field yet. No, they could, I mean, you could pop a Shrek on the Jaegers, but that's all he's really got right now. One, he actually traded one of his Gren squads uh, for a Jaeger squad, so he has even less ability to snare at the moment. Yeah, it's going to be a heavy reliance on these Jaeger Shreks. But the Greyhound is, it's mopping up the left side. It did claim the right side at least, but and I don't know, it's just going to be pretty rough, I think. Alpenwell's almost unconcerned. Here's the first Shrek pops. But uh, he's getting a mortar out now. Mortar is interesting. I'm not sure I'm a fan of it. It's up against a very mobile army, and we also see rangers coming out, so... Oh, boy. Mobile, really. 
Yeah, I, I am also a little confused by that. The other thing is, to be honest, I'm surprised that Jenko's not more wary of mines. With two pioneers and then the Falshrim pyos, uh, you know, Alpenwell has a lot of utility on the field, has the ability to be planting mines everywhere. So it was interesting to me that he was as aggressive as he was with that Greyhound initially. So the reason he's probably that aggressive is the Jaegers can kind of struggle to follow up and kill a Greyhound. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you know, he has to spend all his muni on getting tracks, which means he can't really afford to place down mines. Because, you know, if he, if he places down a mine and the ground hits it and he has no follow-up, <laughs> that effectively yeah. means, like, he just wasted the mark. Yeah. So it's also like muni for nothing. That's one thing. Um, I was watching a game last night, and I won't, I won't say who it was, but uh, there are lots of snares getting thrown out with no opportunity to follow up. And so I was kind of sitting there thinking, like, man, I understand that you want to snare the light vehicle because you can, but you're not going to kill it, so now you're just wasting the munitions. Yeah, the, the only real justification you can give is that you want to give veterancy to your units uh, faster because you get more veterancy doing bad damage on vehicles. But other than that, if you're just throwing out snares, most of the time it's probably not worth it and you're just going to rock this Good to see flanking maneuver on the Rangers still alive and well. Uh, that mortar is already... Uh, I guess it must have been dropped in. They weren't able to recover the actual mortar tube. I was concerned for a minute that the mortar tube itself had been destroyed. Oh, this captain. Go ahead. Uh, destroying the mortar would have been part of the position in the zone. The Greyhound doesn't do that high damage on its own. Kind of usually engage the gun. Yeah, I know sometimes when, when you decrew the mortar, the final model carries it with him off the map. And so the mortar itself gets destroyed. I've seen that happen once or oh, twice. Uh, does that actually happen? Yeah. That's, that's... And I was concerned because I saw the guy running off and I was like, oh no, he didn't drop the mortar, but I, it looks like he did. So uh, Alpenwell uh, didn't that totally like waste that. Yeah. Current, <laughs> Definitely not yeah, as intended. He ordered a 60 map higher down the J because he took an unlucky shot. That's That would be brutal. Yeah. So... We got Alpenwell, he's at least stabilized in the center here, which I think is a decent approach right now. He can't be everywhere like the Americans can. So by focusing on kind of one portion of the map and trying to branch out from there, he, he's going to keep the VPs from getting run down too much. Um, the KD is actually really in Alpenwell's favor so far. Impressive given how much infantry Jenko's had on the field and how much map control he's had. I think that has to do with the fact that he's play, uh, Janko, yeah, Janko has been playing very aggressively into Alpenwell's army, so he's been turtling a lot, you know, playing very aggressively on the MGs, and Janko does have to make the plays, he has to make the pushes, and that always, you know, gives him the a bit of an advantage, because he gets to dictate the cover a little bit better. Yeah. And if my math is right, oh, that Jaeger squad at risk of going down here. Oh, just gonna get away. I think Janko did lose one rifle squad. Uh, no, I think he converted it to the Ranger. Okay. Let me say, I gotta check my math later. Now, P4 coming out for Alpenwell. Oh, that's good. Oh, he basically just skipped here to, uh, only yep. getting Jaeger. Yep. I mean, that's... I think, uh... Also, the mortar got wiped in Janko's base by something. Just a, a mortar war. Oh. It, yeah, yeah, it got knocked up. Or maybe... I thought he was building one. Maybe he cancelled it. It's sitting right, side, it's right outside his barracks. I think Alpenwell's mortar killed it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's sitting there. Oh. The Falshrim Pyos. MG suppresses the rifle squad, so the Falsham Pirates are going to get away. Uh, one squad of Pioneers goes down on the flank. Now the P4 is out. What do you think about the choice of the P4 here instead of the Brumbearer? I like the P4. Um, it's comparative, compared to the Brumbar, it's better at diving anti-tank guns. Mm -hmm. But if uh, Janko decides to just get a double Chaffee or just one Chaffee, uh, that plus the AP gun would be enough to hold up the P4. And I think the biggest issue that Janko is facing right now is... Oh no, 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 no
is facing against the Dankos, more or less like just in between the way down. I think either option is fine. It's just E4 is a little bit more forgiving if you, if you mess up, so to speak. Yeah, a little bit more mobile, a little bit more versatile. And then if he's able to mass a couple of them, I know Alpenwell loves when he plays DAC, the whole like Panzer III train. <clears throat> and here's a weapon scrape coming in. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Alpenwell get a couple of P4s here and kind of combine them. Yeah, I'm really surprised to get to the situation right now. He was ahead for most of the game in terms of weapon control. I think going Rangers really killed a lot of his momentum, especially early on. The very, I mean, it's only 200 rounds after you lose that rifle squad. To get forced back to base, it's very difficult to maintain those constant attacks. Yeah, and and with the two machine guns, the Rangers, you know, get suppressed and forced to retreat. And then this map in particular is pretty wide. And so unless you're just charging up the middle, uh, you, it takes a lot of time to kind of get back out uh, into the fight, especially with an infantry unit. Now P4 here to support these pioneers, and they're actually the rifles force to retreat. AT gun and Greyhound move up, but the P4 is going to back out. And Alpenwell now is converted, and he's got the triple cap on, uh, and almost enough fuel for a second P4. So pretty good flip around, and yet now you're right. It feels like Janko now on a little bit of the back foot. Uh, both from an army composition perspective and then from kind of like a map control perspective as well. Enemy yeah, in this situation, it's very rough to kind of just get back into the game now. USF kind of has that problem. If you go too heavily in tier 3, you kind of dig yourself into a hole. And Ranger Company is kind of notorious for kind of... Hold on. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean, right? Because it, like... The Chaffee is 50 fuel, the Greyhound's 40 fuel, and if you're not, uh, you don't have the armored battle group kind of war machine to decrease the cost. All that fuel is keeping you from getting a tank depot out, uh, which yeah, means exactly. your, your late game armor is not available to you. Uh, with the ISC, his late game armor is going to be a combination of bulldozers and hellcats, most likely. Yeah, but he does have the Chaffee on. The Chaffee is very good at punching upwards. Yeah. Right? It's very good at trading with P4s head on, which helps a lot in just stabilizing himself. But, I mean, he's in the last like three minutes, it feels like he hasn't really accomplished putting up pressure on Al Album at all. Mm -hmm. He's trying to, but he keeps getting sold out every time. Yeah, as his scouts get suppressed by a machine gun on the flank, these two Jaeger squads are rotating over to try to help the light vehicles, but encounter some riflemen. The second P4 approaches. It, it's crazy the Chaffee, you know, penetrating the frontal armor of the P4s, but two P4s is enough to force away the Chaffee. And yeah, the rifle squad can't deal with two Jaegers. Yeah, he's, he's stumbling down on the Chaffees. And, I mean, it might work, but looking at his upgrades, he doesn't have advanced statistics. Losing three, three Vangers. So 25 manpower each. Like, that's a lot of, like, that's like a hundred manpower down the drain. Yeah. Like, they fail us all. Ooh, captain just done something. Well, the captain gets annihilated by the, uh, the Jaegers here. So at least he doesn't have to worry about the flanking speed, or flanking maneuver. Something's yeah. dropping at center. It looks like, uh, that's a false Jaeger squad. Which I like, right? You get a little bit of late game infantry pressure plus the camouflage and the Faust. And yeah, he, I like uh, I like Faust and Hagers, but they do have a little bit of a problem because they have bar rifles specifically. Mm -hmm. And once you get CQC, they kind of, because of the new TTK changes, they didn't really get much to get back into the game. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of behind in that sense. So finding some fights is. Yeah, one other thing I want to point out, Alpenwell went for the medic bunker in base rather than the standard base healing. So that allows him to get the same casualty clearing that you were talking about the Americans get, where occasionally you get a free model just from medics picking up casualties. Janko now setting up to a big push on the south side of the map here on the right flank. 
Jaeger's using some camouflage to kind of move into position, so Alcumuel appears to be anticipating this. And then he's sending his other infantry over to challenge the rangers on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, these rangers are completely out of position. There's just too much firepower at that range. He's just gonna have to retrieve these. Yeah, they're leading a lot of models. Yeah, and they all have Thompson, so they're not in any position to really even fight back. Greyhound forces away the MG on the opposite side. It looks like he's what he's trying to do is lure the P4s into engagement with these two AT guns and two chaffies. Oh, MG42 uh, gets that should be enough to at least pick up one P4. It's going to be really difficult to really... The P4s, you know, they're very durable. He only gets two chaffies. He, he was going to need a lot more. Greyhound goes down. The riflemen pick up the MG42. Now, here come the chaffies and Alpenwell finally reacting with the P4s. I think he was trying to avoid getting pulled into this. He's got his little infantry platoon over here on his flank, which should help quite a bit. Oh, these P4s, one's gonna get snared and engine critted. Here come the chappies, and one P4 is done. One chappie immediately traded out. The other P4 is also gonna go down to these AT guns here. Oh, he might get the trade here. What? Was that the uh, the 155 artillery? Yep, the snares from the rock. So two P4s traded for two Chaffees and a Greyhound. And I think that trade definitely works in Yanko's favor. Yeah, unless these AT guns get caught now. That would be and the here's the loiter. Oh, one's cleared. First straight misses the other AT gun. Rangers MD42 come out to support. Yeah, these are going to get immediately suppressed, but they do have some suppression resistance once they go cover to cover. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. The Rangers get suppressed and now forced to retreat. Oh, overall, for Jack, though, while that was a good trade, losing that 180 gun, it's in my per it's they're all on par right now, but. The fact that Alpha Mall can just keep churning out P4s, whereas uh, Janko can't really have that luxury, it's going to be a bit brutal. Yeah, he's just building his tank depot now. Uh, and so while Janko's capturing the North VP, Alpha Mall's about to capture the South VP. These two Jaeger squads with Shreks and some veterancy are going to be able to hold up it's pretty much anything Janko can throw at him right now. Um, they'll be able to whittle down Rangers unless they get in really close, so. Yeah, I mean, for being credit for Janko, uh, he's been, he has an upgraded pop. <laughs> I, I just noticed something. Uh, he's building his tank beep on top of the Suka, so he won't be able to get that back anymore. On top of what? Uh, bazooka. His base <laughs> with a weapon drop. That's unfortunate. He probably just did the default base construction for it. <laughs> I mean, it's just a bazooka, it's not the end of the world, but I, I quite like having bazooka rangers. Yeah. Just because you can get the range of weapon training, and that'll give you... Uh, it reduces the firing of vehicles and heads, which is incredibly important in vehicle and vehicle fights. Yeah. So I think fire rate is by far the most important stat in those engagements. So, now, Janko unlocked the, uh, the infantry assault, or as we like to call it here, the boys. Um, so, no access to weapons training anyway, but actually, in a previous cast I did, Janko used the super, the five Zook Ranger Squad to great effect to kind of nuke Axis armor. Yeah, it's just, it's really easy to use, and Rangers are just hyper durable. It just lets them kind of play a bit reckless and just get up. Really nice harassment on the red side. Yeah, I'm actually kind of disappointed that people are with that shot because those ranges were uh, really bunched up. Ooh, engine crit on this P4. The AT gun one shot lands through the tree. Let's see if he can get a second attack. Oh my gosh, nice shot. Very clean. Yeah, very, very well executed. Uh, though Alpenwell's already got another P4 coming out. Now he's got a second squad of Falsham Jaegers on the field as well. So, despite yeah, the fact that Janko- Yeah, power reserves in action, uh, it just gives you, like, the trading rate, like, I think Grens are like, what, 16 manpower per model or something? Mm -hmm. So you can afford to play 
pretty reckless with his units because he has a bit of a fallback in that sense. Yeah, the infantry reserves. Another another P4 coming out. It appears Alpenwell is also conserving his munitions. I imagine for another one of those stupid loiters. Um, it's it's got to be one of the single best abilities in the game. Uh, it's it's definitely up there. I would say uh, out of all the like it, it's the best one. But I think in terms of ability power, I think Seek and Destroy is better. But the loiter does come very close to being equally strong. Yeah, it I'm it's especially I think it's more abusable in team games where you have if you have multiple players with that loiter, they can just drop it over and over and over again. Uh, and completely zone out part of the map. And here comes the loiter. I mean, I'm not a fan of this loiter. I think it's, it's just getting the empathy assault, which isn't gonna do much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they kind of got something that can be 42 anyway. But, you know, they're making their way forward. They're doing stuff. They're gonna cap the center, actually. Yeah. But, Yeah, I, I agree. I would almost wait for the infantry assault to depart and then call it. Rangers on a, on a deep flank finally forced to retreat. They'll bleed a little bit. Another ranger squad really jacking up uh, Jaegers from the south side of the map here. And it looks like Alpenwell will get his stolen MG42 back. Yeah, right now, while, while Alf Hulkenwall is kind of throwing the P4s away, Janko still doesn't really have a moving tank, so he's kind of reliant on these rangers to kind of carry the game on their back right now. Yeah, and without without bazookas, they are you know helpless against vehicles, because at least the riflemen have the option for a snare. And Janko's got enough for a Hellcat here. Uh, the fact that he hasn't built one leads him to believe he's probably going bulldozer. Yeah, I would assume because Alpenwell has kind of not been playing his E-Force optimally here, you know, kind of losing them in some bad Return engagement. I think Janko feels confident that maybe his uh, Sherman might go is going to be better. Mm -hmm. And he's got the Vet 3 AT gun as well in support. But I see what you mean about the P4 though. He's used it quite a bit to kind of move uh, to the north side and then back to the center to help, you know, prevent the harassment. And I feel like a Brum Bear would not have been effective in that, you know, you couldn't use it that way. No, it's that, it's less flexible, but it does have the advantage against Rangers specifically. It's a really good counter. Mm -hmm. I mean, people will be okay. It's just right now that the Rangers, I think, are the big issue in these Oh, I think we can already see that happening in the center, it's just balling the infantry. Yeah. Now they're able to knock down the machine gun, but Alpenwell just picks it back up, merges with the Grenadiers, suppresses again, the Rangers are going to be forced to retreat. Yeah, this is the big problem with Rangers, if you don't have a massive distance. That's, I think that's around 200 manpower we just lost. Yeah. Yep. And now, meanwhile, Alpenwell essentially lost nothing. A little bit of manpower, but he's got the Luftwaffe reserves, infantry reserves. Uh, Alpenwell has two of the three VPs, and he just got another P4 out. And then Janko just got his bulldozer. The bulldozer will struggle against two Panzer IVs. Especially he with does have two AP guns now, so he's he's gonna play very cagey with the dose, I think, just try to use it to control the sun for the most part. Mm -hmm. Just if he can force the people to die. Well, first shot does a ton of damage. And now Alpenwell attacking the Panzer Grenadier Company, so I think he wants the packs now to deal with the uh, the bulldozer. Cool. Rifle squad gets takes a ton of damage from the two controllers. Dozer also has a really high armor, so I think this T4's uh, max range are going to struggle to really get through. Mm -hmm. Now, Alpenwell building a bunker on the north side of the map to help hold that VP. He's also got it mined up. Oh, Rangers. Yeah. 
Rangers knock him down. So I, I think, am really, uh, I'm really struggling to see how, in the long term, I think Alpenball is completely reliant on the loiter now, to really deal with uh, what's on the field, because these Falsham Jaegers, well, they're good against okay, rifles, I think Jaegers specifically, kind of just, well, ring, yeah, Rangers, uh, just kind of run them over. Mm -hmm. As long as the Rangers can close, I think if you're the Falsham Jaegers, you can keep the Rangers at range. They'll do a little bit better. Oh, here we go. Here's the push. Counters with the loiter. P4s take a lot of damage from the AT gun. Bulldozer forced all the way out. So Janka will take the middle. MG42 gets cleared by the Rangers. They fight back, get pinned by the, the Stuka. And the other squad retreats. So yeah, like you point out, Rangers just can't hold up. Rifles sprint into the middle. And they get pinned by the Suka loiter again. At least this loiter is tanked for itself ten times over right <laughs> oh, now. Oh yeah. Janko has no... Uh, yeah, Janko has no real options. He has to take this fight in the situation. Yeah. Now, he was able to cap the south side VP. But man, Ranger's off the field now. Loiter's still got six more seconds. I don't know if he'll get another pass. Looks like everything is cleared the circle. Oh man. Rangers get gunned down well outside the circle. Uh but survive. Relic, please fix. Yeah, that's that's one of the big problems with loiters. It's they kinda like lie to you. So if you get trapped, they can kinda just sometimes decide to follow you to the ends of the earth. Mm-hmm. Fixed! Now get back into Yeah, I would I would love to see a total revamp with the loiter system, but maybe we'll see that in the uh, three point patch. Yeah, I feel like Relic has kinda of decided that loiters are just designed to be this way and that we're just stuck with it. So it's, it's, I think it's kinda of broadly considered to not be fun to go up against in general. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I'm on record as not really appreciating them. But. Oh, these yeah, are you, you just press up often and you just, you just crush your enemy. Just press button to win the game, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and these rangers forced to just bleed in an effort to try to hold the center. Yeah, I think uh, Alpha Janko is really struggling with the map power right now. Mm -hmm. We can see these rangers as well. Like, look at the KD ratio and like how much of that is just the rangers dying. That's... He's led so much map by was down to almost two map bar earlier trying to force the rangers and trying to keep himself in the game. Yeah. And and the boulders are doing a lot of damage, but really not claiming many models either. They're like even that machine gun, like it gets chunked down, but it doesn't actually lose anything. There we go, now it's clear. Bolshin make still at full health. They're just throwing a bunch of grenades onto the uh, infantry assault here. Yeah, this like, I think Janko is getting desperate now. He just has to push and take these fights, even though I don't think he wants to. Okay. You know, I've been well floating a ton of resources, so I wonder what his thought, thought process is here. Looks like he's going to lose the center, lose control of the center. And he's actually, got enough uh, VPs. Yeah. One P4 goes down. Oh, he's definitely Yep, I think just to just to cap. Oh, this bulldozer. I mean, you were right. The bulldozer getting a lot of value for Janko. It, I think it's his kind of crush right now. It's his pillar, effectively trying to keep him in the game. Yeah, I wonder because Alpenwell did build the Panzer Grenadier Company. I wonder when we're gonna see. The pack 40. Oh, a Faust comes in to knock out the bulldozer, and that hurts. Yeah, that's a sloppy micro from Janko, and that's, that could be game ending at Oh, Rangers. They're gonna eat that Falsham Nigger squad. So, a little bit of vengeance. Yeah, unfortunately, trading a uh, Delson for a Falsham Nigger squad is. Less than idea, but it's <laughs> keeping him in the game. Yeah. The problem is, Janko doesn't have the fuel, so I wonder 
He must have gotten some of the ISC upgrades. That's the only thing I can think. I I checked earlier. He hasn't actually upgraded anything. It's literally just the the rangers bleeding him to death. I well, I guess my question is where is his fuel going? Because he he doesn't have any of the uh, ISC upgrades. I just checked. And he's only I, at sixty. I, fuel. He built one greyhound, two trappies. So that's around hundred fuel. Yeah. Then the pet. I think his fuel control in, in the mid to late game hasn't done that great either, which I think is quite a bit. I can see that. Rangers on the south side here. They're gonna take this VP from the Jaegers. There are a lot of mines here, so they retreat from their current position. They're gonna eat a lot of damage. Potion Pioneers forced off of the opposite VP. But here comes the P4. Oh. oh man, Rangers lose two models. P4 is going to chase, get a couple more, but not knock out the Ranger squad. And I this is looking pretty rough. I don't know what Danko could do right now to really get himself back into the game. I, I feel like both sides, like even Alpenwell knows, he's like, I just got to hold VPs. 46 VPs at a 2 to 1. I mean, that goes at what, 1 every 3 seconds, so that's about a minute and a half that you gotta hold. He's got, he's got some time to make a play, but he's gonna have to do it soon. Because the longer this takes, the more stress you get, right? Like, this is a mental aspect that you feel you feel forced to just make reckless attacks, and it, it can be brutal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't get to play the way that you want to. And it looks like based on the way Janko's banking resources, we're going to see another bulldozer here. And his rifle's on a deep flank. I worry about... To your point, this looks like this is overly aggressive. And I don't know that he's going to get the return on investment here that he wants. I mean, he sent one rifle straight to the one of the base and he's trying to flank back. I can shoot this up there. And the, they... They almost decrewed the MG42, but with the Grenadiers there, it's immediately back up to, to full strength. Yeah, this this dose is gonna put in work. It really comes down to losing that to the Fausts. Mm -hmm. um, had he been able to just salvage the Dosu there, he would have been able to maintain the center, the center. But I mean, the Rangers can win against the entire infantry composition of Alpha and because the P4 is south, it does give him a slight opening. But I mean, we're looking at a 2 to 1 almost KD ratio here for Alpha Wall. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got so much manpower. Yeah, it, and without advanced logistics, like, that's not sustainable. Especially for Rangers. Okay, he's, he's got, I think he's got one last down. shot. He has, to, he has to really, uh, Alpha Wall the back. He says, wait. <laughs> Right, so he sees it too. He says, I have one more shot. Oh, Pioneers annihilated by the Vet 3 Rangers. We're going to see a Satchel. This is what Rangers are best at. He's going up against us. It's just... Oh, they're forced to retreat, though. Oh, man. Sherman Bulldozer goes down to a combination of Faust and Shreks. And that's actually going to be GG. Jaeger's going to sit here in the center VP to prevent the cap. Falls from Pios, yep. That's good game. Fallen. We fight another All right, everyone. So before we get into the post-match discussion, just going to do a quick review of the build order here. Alpenwell, as a Wehrmacht Luftwaffe battle group, starts with two pioneers, immediately selects a battle group and drops another Falschirm pioneer onto the battlefield. Then he gets his infantry company out, builds a first MG42, a Grenadier, builds a second MG42 as he's building the Luftwaffe company. Then he gets two Jaeger squads, gets a Granatwerfer, uh, and then really he goes into tier four. So you see not a lot of tier two play here um, with the Luftwaffe company. From there, you know, obviously Panzer company, then he builds a med bunker. The primary advantage here, uh, one, there's no fuel cost associated with the bunker. There is a munitions cost for the healing and it takes longer to, to construct, but you get the casualty clearing, which are the medics that go out, pull back casualties. And so occasionally you get a free reinforcement. From there, he's going to build a total of five Panzer fours. Uh, never has more than two on the battlefield at a time, uh, and two more Falschirm Jaeger squads uh, before getting an MG42 and a Falschirm Pioneer at the end of the game. 
Meanwhile, for Janko, playing as the uh, U.S. Advanced Infantry Battle Group, pretty meta start here with Scout, Engineer, Barracks into three riflemen, teching grenades relatively early. He goes Infantry Support Center, so he obviously gets the captain. Then he builds a motor pool and gets a Greyhound out. Uh, Texas Med Station, which in the new patch is really important for the, the healing to deal with the higher TTK. This is where he selects the battle group. He then converts one of his rifle squads to Rangers, gets a mortar out, and then he really leans into the motor pool. So a couple of AT guns, a couple of chaffies to deal with the P4 that's hit the field. And then finally, later, he gets his tank depot out, uh, another couple of AT guns to replace losses, uh, a Ranger conversion of a second rifle squad. And then he ends the game with two Sherman bulldozers and one more rifle squad. So uh, with that, that kind of covers the general build order. And we'll uh, grab Orange Pest and get on to the rest of the discussion. All right, everyone. So back here with Orange Pest. Uh, and so like we kind of normally do, going to start really with Janko, uh, who played a great game, but, but came out uh, as the loser in this one. So uh, looking at like what he could have done differently, um, especially when we get like outside of like build order stuff, like how he plays a little different to pull this one out. And so the first thing that I want to tee up for you, um, you mentioned kind of during the game, how the transition to Rangers almost felt like he lost a lot of the early momentum that he had. Um, so can you kind of elaborate that a, a little bit? So Rangers, while they could be strong, as we saw them deleting multiple units, <laughs> Yeah, are, they're expensive, especially in one v one, where every model is forty five, mm -hmm. which means if you just hit a mine, you're already losing almost ninety manpower. Yeah, and so what ends up happening is your manpower surge are constantly being expended unless you play super cautiously, and that will slow down not only your teching but you're reinforcing the rest of your units, getting new vehicles out, and that's why he was kind of struggling in the early game. Just all all those resources he could have been using. Always just being forced to reinforce the Rangers, especially when you're trading at a two to one rate. That's really bad. Yeah. He, he needed the, the Rangers to at least wipe some units early. It's kind of like their, their thing, right? Like you have, to get, you have to get some wipes to really make them pay for themselves. And he didn't really get them until the late game. Mm -hmm. And that slowed him down, especially with the Greyhound. It didn't really get much value. I feel like he could have been. A little more more aggressive and maybe used uh, with the rangers more in concert to the push i want some of the mortar which he recruited like twice and that was it was it basically didn't do anything so he wasted a lot of resources on that mortar yeah yeah there so you, you hit on a couple of things there the first thing i that i see is like the map now obviously janko is great at using sight blockers to get in close and get flanks but famineville plays so wide that I feel like your rangers spend more time retreating to base and walking back out into contact than they do actually like having utility for you. Uh, whereas I think there are other maps, 1v1 maps, where having the rangers, like if they're a little bit more central, you, you spend less idle time, essentially, time like moving to and from the fight. The other thing, and we kind of, I checked it mid-cast, but no ISC upgrades, really. So, so what you got from the ISC was the ability to attack the motor pool and then you get the captain. Uh, and so I think if he had wanted to play, if he knew he was going to lean that heavily into the light vehicles, into the Greyhound, into the Chaffee, maybe the MSC makes more sense. Uh, especially the canister rounds are super, super strong right now. Uh, and so that maybe may, would have made up for the, the Greyhound getting out a little late, um, give some extra armor, some extra penetration to the Chaffee. Um, so that, that was kind of like one thing there. And then the other piece of it... Uh, Obviously, like losing any unit is bad, but he had made a lot of progress with that bulldozer on the field. And we talked about it in the match. And I was, you know, I was like, man, I really don't know if the bulldozer is going to be the answer with these um, two P4s there. But it did a lot of work and actually, like, had got him some decent map control. Um, so I think losing that was a pretty big turning point. Um, were there any other big kind of engagements in that? that match that you you thought really uh set Janko back that set him back i think i mean aside from like the uh rangers being forced back pretty frequently by the mg42 mm -hmm. i think a big thing was that trade with the p4s with the chaffees losing one at gun really hurts um and even though on paper that's a really good trade because he was playing rangers i think the the 
he was basically out of vehicles, right? And mm -hmm. Albemarle just immediately replaces it with a P4. Mm -hmm. And he's only got 180 gun, which means he has to get another one immediately. And then the Rangers kind of just get zoned out. He had mm -hmm. one rifle at one point. It was, I think it was two rifles, one Ranger, and then actually just issued two Rangers. But he only had the AT gun to really push back the P4. And so during the later on, later stages of the game there, that engagement kind of let Alpumol just push the P4 to the corner of the map, and then Janko is kind of just defenseless against it. Mm -hmm. Because he has to rotate across the entire map, and then the P4 just get, goes to the other side, right? And he just has to play this cannon and mouse game where he's trying to pin down the P4, and it's really difficult. Yeah. And and like we talked about versus the Brumbear, P4 is just a lot more mobile. The other thing I, th I think about is normally when you're behind in a game, you're normally like behind on fuel, and so manpower pure team weapons like the at gun are, are a way to help get you back in the game because they don't slow your tech at all they don't cost it but the one thing that he was really bleeding and short on was manpower not necessarily fuel so i think we noticed some like kind of a fuel deficit later in the game um but yeah to your point if you're losing 90 manpower every time you send your rangers out uh you know then that 250 manpower for an at gun you actually feel a lot more than you you might think. Um, yeah, the I also think he didn't really exploit his early game advantage enough. He had a really strong early game against mm -hmm. Alpomol. Mm -hmm. That Greyhound, I feel like it could have done a lot more. But he was kind of zoned out, and it was like it was the snare, and then like one Shrek at one point. And there was there's no threat of mines because you cannot know if your opponent's getting Jaegers. He's investing all his muni into Shrek's most likely. Mm -hmm. Or if he's really confident and gets the G forty three, but then you have to be super duper confident. Mm -hmm. And what kinda what kinda ended up happening was Alpamal got comfortable, he got his positions up, and then the MP forty two just kinda just sat there and held the ground. And Jackpot was really unable to make any progress on uh, just forcing them back and killing them. Mm -hmm. But that kind of, and then once the P4 comes out at 12 minutes, he's really struggling to just get back into the game. Yeah, I think probably the right choice there for Alpenwell to really just move right through tier two into tier four. Um, I think the time and fuel it would have taken to side tech to Warble Winds probably wouldn't have been worth it. So uh, it felt like the right choice for him to go to the P4. Uh, anything else uh, from Janko uh, that you liked or wanted to highlight? Uh, I did mention the mortar earlier, but other than that, I don't think... I mean, you could you could call out the infantry assault a little bit as being kind of not used too well. Instead of throwing it down the center, I think he could have been better off pushing it down to the corner DPs instead. Mm -hmm. And that's because those places were not defended by MGs as much. The North one was, but not the South one as much, and that would have been an easier way to get VP control instead of just throwing them dead center. Just They kind of just died. <laughs> they didn't really do much. <laughs> Yeah, or the, I was thinking with them, maybe they go towards the cutoff, so like just off center, and then you use them as kind of the anvil and, and kind of come in with your forces from the opposite side and see if you can't pinch Alpenwell. The advantage for Alpenwell is he's fighting that engagement right in front of his own base and his base MGs. So he can get back, he can soft retreat, he can reinforce really quickly, and he doesn't have to worry about flank suppression because he's got that available to him. Um, so kind of, kind of tough. And I think it's unique to like Feminville approach. Um, yeah, really kind of tough spot to put those, the, the infantry assault, but by the same token, he didn't really have any weapons upgrades on his Rangers. So I don't know, like the range of weapon training would have also been wasted, right? The Thompson's don't really yeah, get much of a bonus. Yeah, it was a bit of a weird choice. Yeah. Um, he, he got a bunch of bars and he got a couple of bazookas, I think. And he gave the bars to his rifles, so he never had to really upgrade the rifles with bars. Mm -hmm. But not having, like, I, I find it really weird not giving rangers upgrades, um, because they kind of, not to say they crush on it, but it is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Especially because five Thompson rangers still will just annihilate, like, a Foschermager. And most, most German infantry, aside from maybe Stosstruppen, can really stand up to rangers in CQC. Mm -hmm. So, Maybe you have to, I think he also. Uh, I mean, you could argue the team the weapon drops were wasted on rifles, just getting bars, but he could have upgraded it instead for more momentum in the early game. And instead, like maybe you know, uh, how much is the drop? Like nineteen muni. I mean, two of those. That's one eighty ish. Mm -hmm. That could have been another one of fiber rush, and that could have been used to wipe an MG. Because if you don't retreat immediately, actually, even if you do retreat immediately, sometimes you'll still lose the MG. Yeah, the first round comes in really quick. And that, that, that could have been a tool to just kind of break the center open, right? 
Yeah. But he didn't really do that. He did at one point, and he got a lot of value. I think he killed... It was during the push with the Chaffees, and I think that's what really helped him get in there and, you know, actually make some plays. And I think he wiped something with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so just like the, you know, as happens pretty often in these high-level games, a lot of it comes down to less like the unit play and more how you combine the units with uh, like the late game abilities, right? Like mechanized assault, the loiter, the naval artillery, like using all that stuff, seek and destroy, like you said, like using all that stuff at the right time to flip an engagement that you think is going to go one way and then, you know, now suddenly you're losing it because you weren't anticipating it. Like that's, that's how you break games like this open. Um, yeah, for sure. On to Alpenwell. Uh, I thought he did a really good job recovering from that early game pressure. Um, two MG42s, especially with the, the new TTK, the, the models drop a little faster than you might like, but he did a good job of zoning out and making the Rangers feel uh, kind of less efficient than you'd want them to be. Uh, anything else that you really liked from Alpenwell in this one? Um, the way he played the Jaegers was very nice. He was very cautious with them. Mm -hmm. Didn't really. He used the camo a lot to basically not give Janko an idea of where they were, so he couldn't be as aggressive with the Rangers. Not Rangers to Greyhound, sorry. Yeah. Um, and that that kind of like that kind of play, uh, it forces your opponent to be cautious, and that lets him kind of dictate a little bit more on where the Greyhound might go. So go to places with screening infantry. Or where he's certain there isn't any Jaeger sighting. Um, the Deloitte usage was really good when you played the first AT gun. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might think that's overkill, but for me, uh, 180 muni to get an AT gun, you're basically 180 muni for uh, 250 manpower. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good trade. Mm -hmm. um, his P4 usage was a little bit lacking, but Towards the end, I really liked how he played this, the last P4 and just hit it in the side of the map. Because that allows him to just kind of, he forces Janks to either make a decision to give up that point or throw like two AT guns and probably like a bunch of rifles at it to try and break that position. And that lets him dictate other maps more easily. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it reflects maybe a little bit like a stylistic difference. Uh, Alpenwell is primarily a 1v1 player and so I felt like he was very comfortable spreading the map um, and kind of crafting engagements that were wins for him without having to overcommit. I think with Janko who comes, uh, obviously he's good at 1v1s but he comes from that like 2v2 realm you see him want to like mass his forces a little bit more like the big swing with the AT guns and the chaffies to the south the big pushes through the middle AT guns, rifles, and, and the bulldozer. Uh, and so I think that's where kind of Alpenwell started to win out. Part of it might have been the the map that they were playing on. Part of it was the unit selection with the P4s. Uh, but I think he was just a little bit more comfortable managing engagements across the map uh, without having to kind of like bring everything together for one big push. Yeah, I think Janko was really looking for that decisive engagement. Mm -hmm. But he was never really able to find that. Yeah. And partially that's because he has the loiter accessible to him, right? The loiter kind of, it, it has to, like, we talked about we don't like loiters, but well, 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 there's a psychological effect to them. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, I know my opponent has held a lot of munitions, I know he has a lot of the map. If I go for a big push, even if it succeeds, he might just drop it. Mm -hmm. And I think that was maybe sitting on the back of Janko's mind a little bit, and that's a very good deterrent, because... It just it just wins you an engagement for free, basically. There's not yeah. really much of a counter. And it kind of like even in the worst possible situation, right? He can always rely on the loiter to kind of swing things. Now he didn't need it um that game. So instead he used it to you know, just secure victories like a doubly, you know, like mm -hmm. getting the AT gun, uh winning in I think it was a central engagement. He also dropped the loiter and he was losing and he kind of just turned it around completely. Yeah. And and even if all it does, one of those, all it did was suppress alternating like ranger squads, but that's all he needed it to do. He didn't even yeah. need it to I mean, kill the, anything. The ranger's like, in total, like 800 manpower or something in terms of like value. Mm -hmm. so, even, so even if it just suppresses him back to the start of the map, that's like so much time he's bought, because they have to probably replenish more rolls, they have to heal up, and they have a lot more HP than normal rifles. I think at Vet 3 they have 130. Mm -hmm. And that will give you a lot of just, just 
brutal attrition and just time spent in bits. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, those are those are all the notes I had. Did you have anything else? Uh I would have liked to see some sus treatment instead of Fox Amigas, maybe. I think for what he was doing, that would have been nice. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he, I think he went Fox Amigas for the snare. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of crucial. Yeah, it definitely helped, helped him with the it helped him with the bulldozer there at the end. Yeah, other than that, I don't think I have much else. Maybe you just... You, I don't think Elton will upgrade a veterancy one on anything, and I think that's pretty important, because you can give your Fox Amigas veterancy one when they drop in now. I think that would have been really nice to see. You know, are they tied to the Panzer Grenadier Company or the Luftwaffe Company? Uh, both of those buildings. Okay. All right. Well, that's... So it, it, uh, it's just I, any tier two building will give it essentially. Nice. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought it was a pretty good game. Uh, it was clearly closely fought, and it kind of went back and forth. I I honestly thought Janko was going to run away with it there, at, like the four minute mark. So cool to see Oppenwell battle back, and then Janko still almost turned it around. The, uh, the GG, and then, wait, wait a minute, I got one more push in me. Uh, pretty cool. So, hey, uh, Orange Pest, thanks for uh, for taking the time. Really appreciate you casting this one with me. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Yeah. I'm always down to cast and look at games, especially now that I've been not playing for, like, four weeks because of my vacation. Yeah. Well, uh, I still don't want to play you in a 1v1, so I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man, I appreciate it. That's going to be it for us, guys, and we'll uh, see you in the next one.